So I guess I'm making a 1780s outfit now. I mean, I wasn't planning on it, it just kind of happened. So first I made these 1780s stays, remember? Then I got the American Duchess 18th century beauty book to go along with the 18th century dressmaking book I already had. And then all of a sudden I found myself just casually making a false rump with leftover fabric and then hand sewing a linen cap. And then the next thing I knew I was searching for discontinued floral print Ikea duvet covers on eBay. The American Duchess Guide to 18th Century Beauty features a pattern for a black silk bonnet. I've often heard these referred to as market bonnets and they were quite popular with all classes of folk and can be seen in paintings and prints from the era. It seems the most popular color for this type of bonnet was black, but I don't have enough black taffeta, but I do have some of this leftover ivory taffeta from my 1840s bonnet that I think I can use. At least I think I have enough fabric. We'll see. I know that other colors for these bonnets were available, but do I have any evidence that off-white was used in 18th century bonnets? No. But this is the fabric that I have in my stash, so I'm going to use it. The book uses pasteboard to stiffen the brim of the bonnet, but I don't have that, but I do have a bunch of leftover fusible buckram, so I'm going to use that. But this stuff is kind of bulky, so I need to trim the seam allowance off of it. I'm also going to line the brim and the crown of the bonnet with muslin. The book uses cotton organdy, but I don't have that. But I have muslin, and I think I'm just going to starch the heck out of it to stiffen the fabric and hope this bonnet never gets rained on or else it'll lose all that stiffness. After adhering the buckram to the lining, I sewed the two brim lining pieces together. But because I don't trust the glue on the buckram to hold well enough, I sewed through all the lining layers to keep them secure. Okay, I have assembled the brim of the bonnet, so there's the two layers of taffeta, the two layers of lining, and then the buckram in the middle that is stitched down. Then I've also sewn the lining to the call and basted the bottom edge. So this will be the back side and it'll get put into a drawstring casing. One problem, my iron decided to spit out rust stained water all over this white. Luckily, it's on the inside, so you won't ever see it, but I gotta clean out my iron and make sure that doesn't happen again. But the part where I attached the two pieces together is all hand-stitched um, with a prick stitch around the outside. That's what the instructions called for in the book. So the next thing I have to do is hand sew an eyelet in the back here for the drawstring. I am using this stuff, this uh, eighth inch twill tape that I bought for my Regency dress for the drawstrings on the back of the bonnet. So first I have to secure the drawstrings on either side. And then I can slip the drawstrings in through the eyelet. and fold this part back and sew it down. This is the panel that's gonna make up the poofs 
over the front of the bonnet. I did about half of it by hand with a hand rolled hem and uh, until I realized this edge isn't going to be seen when I'm wearing the bonnet. So I could have just machine sewed it and it wouldn't have mattered. So I don't know if I'm gonna continue hand sewing it just because or if I'm going to finish the rest by machine just to save time. Also, I did not have enough fabric to do one whole strip. So I had to piece it together. So this is a French seam, but that's okay because several sections of these will be gathered together. So you won't notice this seam. And then over here, the book had me turn under the raw edge and sew it down. So I did that. Now I need to copy this line here onto this. So I'll do that with some chalk. And then I can start pleating the call to the brim. The book tells you to just pleat the fabric until it fits. I can't be the only one who hates randomly pleating fabric to fit a certain arbitrary length. I know in the past people weren't super perfectionist about their pleating, but I just like knowing that my pleats are perfectly even and evenly spaced. So doing this without any sort of guidance or at least mathing it out first is just antithetical to my nature. I sewed this part on by machine since it will be entirely covered by poofs. I'm certainly not against sewing everything by hand, but I've got a baby, so I have to use my limited time wisely. My general approach is that if it'll be seen on the finished garment, it gets sewn by hand. Otherwise, machine is fine. Which is why I finished the rest of that poofy strip piece by machine. That then gets gathered into six sections and tacked in place over the front of the bonnet. The bonnet is finished with a bow, which I sewed by hand because it's front and center and will definitely be visible. The book teaches you how to make a handful of different bow variations. I'm making a four poof bow by stacking two gathered loops on top of one another. I sewed the bow in place, also by hand, and I probably went a little overboard with tacking this thing down just to be safe. Don't want the bow flying away in the wind. doesn't seem so big until I put it on my head. It's gigantic. But looking at original art, those bonnets are pretty hefty as well. I just love when a project makes you look like you stepped out of a painting or a satirical print, especially when the fashion is so unlike your everyday wear. The only thing I would change about it, the brim needs to be stiffer. I could add another layer of buckram to the brim and wire the edge for more strength, 
But to do that without taking the entire thing apart, I'd have to rip out the brim seam and then slip stitch it back closed by hand. It's certainly doable, but it wouldn't be fun. But otherwise, this was an easy project that was completed in only about four naps. Yes, I am still measuring my free time by how long my baby sleeps. And yes, I am dreading the day when she goes from taking two naps a day to just one. I'm wearing this with my shimmy dress, which is one of the first costumes I ever made and one I totally forgot I owned when I made my 1780s stays. I did a kind of combination of the three 1780s hairstyle tutorials in the American Duchess book. My hair is too long for the classic hedgehog look, but it's good enough. As always, thank you for joining us as we savor the flavors and the aromas of the 18th century. The uh, sorry, wrong channel. Anyway, I will be back in a couple weeks with more 1780s sewing adventures. Until then, happy sewing. <laughs>